Stephen Karinji, who we share a name with, he's a namesake, uh, and he's going to be presenting the area. Uh, now, the area report, uh, Steve is, uh, is head of, he's been very much involved in the trade issues and heads that unit at the ECA, and he has been uh, very much a supporter of the intricate negotiations that are taking place uh, on, the, on behalf of Africa in the different fora. So I'm very happy to be uh, calling him up here to present the ARIA report. He will tell us what ARIA report is. But uh, I also want to point out that that report has actually been done in collaboration with us at the African Development Bank. And on the side of the African Development Bank, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, uh, Mono Mupotola has been the uh, one heading it. So please, uh, Steve Karinji, you have 10 minutes to present. Welcome in with the club, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, I have 10 minutes, so I'm going to put my timer. So if you hear the ring, you know that I'm also going to stop. Now, the Assessing uh, Regional Integration in Africa is a joint publication of the ECA, AU, and the African Development uh, Bank, the constraints to intra-African trade. We presented it to the ministers of trade uh, in Kigali, and then after they realized what it was that was blocking intra-African trade, and one of them being the lack of harmony in the trade policies, they said, okay, why don't we go ahead and fast track the realization of the free trade area? And then they asked us to go and come up with ideas of how we can achieve the continental free trade area. So the fifth in the series, area five, we looked at the issue of the continental free trade area and what a continental free trade area would give in terms of benefits to Africa. Now, since the continental free trade area requires some negotiations, both in the tariff regime, issues of rules of origin, other elements to do with the, that are trade related, we decided as the three institution to focus the current series on the issue of rules of origin, given that they are one of the most uh, contentious areas when it comes to, um, to negotiating trade agreements. Now, so it is organized in three chapters. The first part, we look at what progress has been made in the area of regional integration. I think that is what we have been talking about the last three days. Now, we have documented on the basis of what is happening in the RECs, the momentum that is there at the regional, sub-regional levels, and we've given examples of the protocols, and as you have had examples being given here from the area of free movement of people, uh, including uh, dealing with transnational crime in the context of regional cooperation. And then we have talked about the strides that have been made by the RECs in the area of financial and monetary cooperation, and we've given examples, um, sorry, Okay, I was told if I click on this, it will move forward. Yes, it does. Um, we've, been, we've given examples of what is happening in the various uh, regional economic communities, in the area of infrastructure, uh, and then it also tackles a very important issue that was coming up and again in the discussions, the whole idea of transposing regional agreements at the national level. So if you take the report, you'll actually see what the member states say to be the areas where they think they are succeeding in transposing the regional integration protocols into national instruments. Then after that, we go to the, to the chapter that is dealing with the rules of uh, origin. There you are. Now, I don't have to define the rules of origin, but what I can tell you is that what the report does, it is outlines the different rules of origin that operate in the different regional economic communities. And it gives examples of those differences and where there is some convergence. And then because these, like I said, are going to be uh, major areas of the negotiations, the report 
outlines about seven steps, or at least seven key principles that we believe could actually help in the negotiations of the CFTA. Um, I think I'll get somebody to click for me. Yeah, there. So we have the seven principles that we have proposed for negotiating the rules of origin. Now, it is important that you take note of these seven principles because these seven principles go back to the first session that we had today in terms of the plenary. Remember, it was about industrialization and trade for transforming Africa. So the report makes suggestions of how African countries can come up with harmonized rules of origin that would allow linkage development to take place and value addition to take place within the continental marketplace of Africa. For instance, we say the first principle that should be considered is the compelling imperative for Africa's structural transformation. That alone will dictate the kind of rules of origin that you come up with. The second principle also recognizes the overwhelming dependence of um, African countries on imported intermediate inputs. So if you come up with rules of origin, you want to make sure that you also don't disenfranchise the countries that do import mat raw materials or intermediate inputs from outside the CFTA region, while at the same time encouraging the, encouraging the utilization of intermediate inputs that, come from, that will come from within the CFTA. Of course, we talk about um, encouraging the private sector in terms of uh, the discussions on the, of uh, rules of origin, make sure that the private, sector, the private sector is part and parcel of those negotiations. They have to be simple, the rules of origin, that is what we, we say. And then we also uh, highlight that if you look at what is prevailing at the different regional economic communities, for instance, in SADAC, you have product-specific rules of origin. And then you also have the value-added rules of origin that prevail in ECOWAS, EAC, and uh, COMESA. We believe it's possible to combine the best, the, the best of both worlds to be able to come up with rules of origin that would actually be acceptable to the different uh, regional economic uh, communities. Now, of course, you get the report. Then we look at the whole issue of trade facilitation. What I can tell you here, and I think we talked a lot about this, is that in the previous publication that we did uh, together, the three institutions, we found out that if you remove the tariffs across Africa, which of course remain a stumbling block to intra-African trade, you can only increase intra-African trade by about three to four percentage points from where it is now. However, if you improve trade facilitation just by half, removing some of the things, the bottlenecks that we've been discussing, it would be possible to double intra-African trade under, in under less than, in under 10 years, by 2022. So we believe trade facilitation is quite important. Of course, the way we define trade facilitation includes both, it, beyond the border issues, uh, we also think about um, issues of um, transit regime, uh, issues of infrastructure development, and of course the regulatory framework for the regional transport markets. Basically, the report highlights what is happening in the different regional economic communities, and then it gives a basis of where there are commonalities and what could actually be the basis for discussions of a CFTA. Now, of course, one of the things that we have we recommend for this uh, CFTA is the one-stop border port posts. Now, the report gives you the different models of one-stop border posts. This one is the case, the model that is being used in Chirudu border post, which of course, again, was mentioned, is already doing very well in integrating trade or uh, facilitating trade between Zambia and um, the, the trade crossing between Zambia and Zimbabwe. And basically the one-stop border post, basically what it does, it prevents you from stopping twice, both on the Zambian side and also on the Zimbabwe, on the Zimbabwe side. But there are different models of the one-stop border post. Oh, my time is up. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Um, the last chapter, 
talks about ICT for trade. I think I'll spend only one minute here, uh, Chair. Now, you saw the African Development Bank uh, published a report on what ICT could do to transform Africa. Basically, what this uh, chapter is about is what ICT could do to, trans uh, to transform trade uh, in Africa. Um, we, give, um, we give example of how you can use ICT for the national single windows, how you can use ICT to track cargo. We also argue that regional single windows are the future for the continent. And then we talk about that, well, they are costly, but we believe it is possible to be able to recover the costs of, uh, of uh, the investments that one makes in order to have ICT for trade if you do it well. Of course, especially if you create um, the, right, um, the right environment because ICT cannot work uh, on its uh, own. So, Chair, I'll uh, stop uh, here if I can get the last, uh, the last uh, environment that the supporting environment that the report argues for that is required to make ICT work uh, for trade. You can get copies of this um, executive uh, summary. We decided we want to give you the except executive summary because you'll be able to download the full report from our respective, uh, uh, from our respective web websites. It's both in English and uh, French, and I understand for the media, there are press releases uh, that are being distributed. Thank you very much. Thank you.